Spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up this high mountain by themselves. <coughs> and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. And Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from this mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. this gospel and hear it at the very spot where the transfiguration happened. Um, and just assume the mindset of Peter. And just You could imagine uh, Jesus being shown in essentially the glory that he would have at the resurrection, giving his disciples a, a foreshadowing, a foretaste of what was to come. And Peter is caught up in the moment. He says, oh my gosh, Lord, it is so good that we are here. I think we can all maybe share that sentiment here today. It's, it's just good that we are here. It's good that we can come and we can bring our intentions. Um, the people that we want to pray for on, on this same spot uh, where Jesus was transfigured um, in front of uh, his three closest disciples. Or his, yeah. But then Jesus responds. Right? He doesn't want them to stay in this moment. Right? What he's really doing is he's preparing them for Calvary. He's preparing them for the cross. And so he's giving them this great moment of consolation um, so that they will have the strength necessary um, to see him die and then eventually to go out uh, and uh, go to their own martyrdom, with the exception of John. And very much that's uh, one of the things that is so beautiful about the pilgrimage. Is it, it's, a, it's a great time of consolation. We just step back from uh, the busyness of the world and all of our earthly cares and concerns, and we can just focus uh, and be filled up uh, with that same spirit that Jesus filled up his disciples at the Transfiguration. And he can give us that strength, um, because we go back home and uh, we probably have a lot of crosses to carry ourselves, and that's not easy. And Jesus knows that, and that's why he came and he was transfigured in front of his own disciples just to strengthen them. Um, and he, he does that same thing uh, for us here today. But he strengthens us uh, for the journey ahead. And he's so, uh, so loving uh, that he is looking out constantly for, for our needs. And just like the Father says to Jesus, uh, and this is the second time after the first being is baptized, and this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And he says the same thing when we ourselves are baptized. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. Let me give you the strength necessary so that you can please me as well. And so maybe that can be one of uh, our special prayers here. Uh, so we celebrate this Mass is that uh, the Father can say those same words to us who have been adopted uh, into God's holy family. Uh, that he really does uh, delight in us. Uh, that he really does care about us. And that he can fill us with that, uh, that same spirit. And if we remain faithful to him, he promises, you know, our own resurrected bodies, uh, that we ourselves will be 
uh, transformed, uh, transfigured, um, to become like him. And what a blessing that is. And so I pray that as we're celebrating this Mass, um, just be very intentional in offering up uh, you know, your intentions, your prayers, but in particular one person at each and every Mass uh, that you have in the silence of your hearts. And if you don't know who, just ask the Holy Spirit to inspire you. Um, and give that person to the Father. Right? And let him delight in you. Um, let him fill you with his grace uh, so that you can go back home uh, and carry the cross that our Lord uh, has called you to carry.